Hey guys, Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com. I'm at my house today. I'm trying to get a bunch of projects straight because we are moving into a new shop at the 1st of November. So I need to get some personal projects knocked out and a couple of cars sold so that I don't have to take them over there because we're doing some more garage, basically rehab. I'm gonna redo our home garage. Anyway, I'm working on my 91 S10 today, just getting it buttoned up before I offer it for sale. Um, I just pulled the door panels off. Let me show you. I just pulled the door panels off. I put on all brand new clips. Um, these are the uh, screw in type. Put, I took both the door panels off. I retightened everything. I made sure the window tracks were greased properly. Um, the door cards were just flopping around. So I put all brand new clips in them. Um, I used stainless steel hardware to hold these in because they all get all reamed out and stuff. Um, I put in all new stainless steel screws. Uh, not that it matters, but it looks better than the black in my opinion. I did the same thing with the driver's side. When I bought the truck, it did not have this panel right here, um, but I put it on and it matches the other side. So now that door card is good other than, you know, it just looks worn, but man, this whole truck does, but I'm loving the patina to be perfectly honest with you. I was gonna paint this thing and keep it, but I've just decided I just don't need it. And uh, anyway, I just love the patina that this thing has. And in Florida, it shouldn't get, get really bad. If I end up keeping it, if I decide not to sell it, which that's not an option. Uh, the wife says, a couple of cars got to go from the house and they're just cars I really just don't need and blah, blah, blah. So I am going to sell it. But if I kept it, I'd probably use Infinity Auto all over it. I'd spray it on and just cover up this patina and, and preserve it instead of getting rid of it. Um, if I were going to keep this, I would probably rewrap this. Uh, and the blue vinyl that you can get from LMC truck. But again, I ain't keeping it. So, but this thing runs perfect. The clutch is amazing. The brakes are awesome. The engine is awesome. I've replaced every single possible thing that could go wrong with this thing. Um, anyway, long story short, this video is two and a half minutes in. I'm just telling you that I'm about to pull the headliner and, uh, rewrap it so this video is about uh i guess redoing a headliner so i'm gonna go ahead and get this thing pulled out i gotta pull all the trim panels uh the dome light uh it did not have a cover on it i do have a brand new cover for that so i'm just gonna pull the visors out get the headliner out of here and i'll bring you back uh and show you what we're gonna be doing so i'll bring you right back when i'm ready to start wrapping this thing I wasn't gonna show this part just cause it's dirty and whatever, but what I'm doing is I got this little brush. You can see I've already removed the bulk of the uh, foam from this side, but this is the uh, breaking down nasty foam. So I'm just scrubbing it off the panel. And then I'm taking my little DeWalt vacuum and just sucking up all the debris. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue that and get all that cleaned up and I'll bring you back. All right, so I have everything cleaned up. It's pretty good. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect. And like I said, I'm gonna sell this thing. If I were gonna keep it, it's possible that I would probably just order a new headliner for about 200 bucks. Um, this is generally not how I would do it either. Again, I'm trying to get this done today because I want to take pictures this afternoon and get this thing listed. The only other thing after the headliner, because I've already done the door panels, the only other thing I've got to do really uh, to this thing is I have brand new clear taillights and I'm missing a corner lamp. So I got to go in there and dig out the, uh, uh, the wiring. And then I have a replacement for those two corners, those two running lights, and I have brand new clear tail lights because these are all cracked up again it was all because i was going to keep the truck but now um new plans i'm gonna sell this truck i am selling the mini uh just just to get them out of my way really um i don't i don't have to have the money for them per se uh it's just they're kind of in my way and i got 
bigger and better fish to fry and I'm after a different toy. So <laughs> that's really the reason. Don't tell my wife. Anyway, uh, she'll find out soon enough. Um, I'm going to probably, this was in there. I'll clean the shit out of this. I might use some, uh, plastic paint and paint that blue. I am going to shampoo the carpets and stuff. Uh, but man, this thing runs great. Uh, it runs awesome. Shifts awesome. Suspensions all bell tech. It's got like a six, eight drop if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it's there's a lot going on. Anyway, I fixed this with some duct tape just to reinforce some areas. I am going to spray glue on it, but I got it back where it needs to be as far as it's a whole headliner now. This whole corner was broken. I found some pieces, kind of put it back together, but um, sorry, the trash guys coming. Um, but anyway, I got it back together decently. I also used my brush and got a lot of the crap off the sides. Um, but anyway, this duct tape was just some leftover stuff I had laying around and it really did a, a great job of, of reinforcing, uh, the pieces that were falling apart. Again, I'm trying to sell it. I don't want to, I don't want to spend a bunch of money. I spent the money for the material and the glue. Uh, like I said, I got about 25 bucks after tax in this and about 13 bucks after tax with this uh, from Home Depot. So 25, 35, 37. So I got about $40 in everything, including the duct tape versus the 200, where I could just order a new headliner, throw it in there, be done. So I would rather spend the 40 on something that I'm gonna sell. And honestly, when it's done, you'll see, it'll look just as good as a new one. And it probably will never have to re be replaced again before this thing is in the scrap yard. So, with that said, if you can't duck it, you know what they say. And that's where I'm at. So, we ducked it, we're good to go. And uh, now it is time to pull out the material, lay it out, cut it to the right size, and then I will glue the back side of the material and the actual headliner and then I'll probably put you on the tripod and show you how I lay this out. So we'll be right back once I measure out the material and get that all cut. All right, <clears throat> I laid it on there and I didn't have to cut a whole lot off. All I, all I bought was one, basically one yard of fabric. So I cut about, I don't know, 10 inches off one side and it's the right size. So, all right, so now what I got to do is I gotta lay out the fabric. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna lay it out right here on the bed. Lay out the fabric and then I will glue half of the fabric and half of the actual... You know what? Let me put you on the tripod. All right, so I got you where you can see what's happening. So we got our material. So I'm laying this out. I'm actually gonna Yeah, now you can see better. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna spray half of this headliner and half of the uh, material with the 90. There we go. So you're going to put a good amount of uh, glue on half of this thing. Get a lot of glue on if you end up using duct tape. Which, again, I would normally fiberglass that. That would be what how I would make it work. But I just wanted something cheap and something fast. And that duct tape is going to be just what the doctor ordered. All right, so now that we've got 
good amounts of glue on half of the uh, headliner. We're going to do half of the material. And then the two sides will tack up independently, and then when you put them together, you get really good adhesion. Uh, if you read the bottle, it'll tell you that. So, good amount of glue. So, now, great. Now, we have to get situated where we can lay it down, and uh, this stuff really sticks. So you want to make sure that you are in good shape with sizing and what's going on before you even get started. Because once it starts to stick, you only get the one chance. So, what I like to do is start in the middle and massage my way back from the center. And you wanna you wanna make sure that your contours don't have basically air in them. So you don't want your corners to be fastened in a big way until you press them down. So here we go. That's half of it tacked down and all even with no air bubbles. And after we get the top all straight, then I'll show you how to do the edges. But now, fold that back and now you can do the other side. Alright, got some good glue happening, and then you just, you want to do a push from the center, and while it's wet, that's your chance to make sure there's no air bubbles, no pockets. It's working pretty good.
Headliners are no problem if there's no sunroof involved or um, basically a, a roof console. When that stuff's involved, they get much more complicated and they are not as easy. But when there's no sunroof and no roof console involved, totally doable by pretty much anybody. So anyway, I got this straight, nice suede. Uh, so it's all good for what you'll see on the in, uh, inside. And uh, I gotta get something to cover up. When I flip it over, I don't want it to get all dirty, so I'll bring you right back. All right, we're back. So I grabbed a uh, towel or a packing blanket and put it on top of the table. And so now this is where we're at. So next step is go ahead and get your edges all done. You are going to have to cut a little bit, and I'll show you that in a second. So I'm pr I am going to burn up a whole can of this. So, full $12 on that one. Cannot have too much glue, that's for damn sure. All right, so, I usually like to I score the uh, corners a bit. You're going to have to go in and recut your holes and all of that for uh, the visors and whatever else. Look, I'm not saying you need to do headliners. I'm just saying it's an extra way to make money if you're looking to make more money. So you kind of just cut it to however it will lay flat. But remember when you're cutting your corners, make sure that you're not cutting too much material because you don't want any knots or whatever to be in that, be, to be visible. You want to be able to lay it down flat as possible because when you try to put it back in the car, if it's not cut right, it's not going to fit right. And, uh, by all means, continue to use glue if you need to. But you want to make everything lay down as flat as possible because when you put it in there, uh, when you put it back in the cart, see, I've got a little excess right here. You probably can't see it from where you're viewing, but got a little excess and I don't really want all of that like thick material just sitting there so i got one corner done now i've got to come over here cut some material out of that score my corner a little bit but just don't go all the way don't go all the way 
uh, to the he the actual headliner backing when you're scoring. because you won't get a good fold, if that makes sense. And you want it to fold and be super tight. Tight is important in many aspects of a man's life. Anyway, Use, use, use additional glue where you see fit is the uh, official professional answer. Sorry, where I'm just letting the uh, camera run while I get some of this done. Because I just want to, I don't know, I guess I want you guys to see how this all works out. As you're folding and doing your thing, you will absolutely be able to tell where you can fold, where it makes the most sense, where you probably shouldn't fold. You can really see it all as you're working. But again, my, my main concern is just making everything super tight. I want all of it to be super tight. Hey big boy. Hello. What's up buddy? You're shooting a little video. How are you doing? I love you. I love you. Did you have a good day? All right, now we have this last corner to That's good. Yeah, man. I absolutely used a complete can on this project. And really, I'm okay with that. Sorry. It did not change anything, really. I still had to own that can to make it happen from the get go. So, yes. Yes, I used more than I anticipated. I thought I'd only have to use half the can, but that's all right. I bought that can to use with this job, and here we are. So, all right, and that's really that. I'm gonna flip it over now so you can see what's up. Go over these edges just one more time. Everything's super tight, everything's good. Yep, I'm happy with that, guys. <laughs> so, let me show it to you. All right, headliner's done. Now I just gotta throw it back in there. Can't see that duct tape now, can you? You don't even know it's there. So uh, I've got to cut the corners out so that I can uh, put the visors back in and I got to cut the uh, dome light hole out and then uh, throw this bad boy back in there and she's good to go. All right, I will, uh, I mean, yeah, you just unbolt some stuff, take it out and you put it back in and bolt it all back together. It's not complicated. We'll be right back and I'll show you the finished product. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, <clears throat> headliner is complete. It's all put back in there. I also put in an LED dome light and a brand new cover. A 
Looks good to me. It's a little wonky just because I had to reinforce several areas to make it happen, but it looks good. Very happy with that. Much more sellable now without that falling nasty headliner. Thank you guys for watching these videos and listening to me babble. Uh, that was how to install a headliner. Good deal. I appreciate you guys watching. Check out detailjuice.com for all your product needs. And if you need me, 813-846-4406. Check me out on Instagram, gary.dean.35. Get her done. Thanks, guys. Give them some.